Hello, hi everyone. Welcome back to Wu Can Cook. My name is Wesley, and this is a show where we are slowly cooking our way through all of the food from my childhood. Today we're taking a crack at a Chinese takeout classic with some inspiration from this Will and Grace scene. <laughs> Why don't you just use your fingers? No, I want to get it the way the Chinese do. <laughs> I mean, okay. As weird as this scene is, cause like, who eats noodles like that? What? I thought this is actually an excellent opportunity to explore some chopstick technique here because the reason that Grace is having so much trouble eating these noodles is because the serving container is meant to be brought closer to her face and then eaten with two hands. This is also the same reason that you'll usually see Chinese folks eating out of a small rice bowl held in their hand rather than off of a flat plate, which aids in a chopstick technique that I refer to as shoveling food into your god face. Either way, in any case, I also thought I'd use this as an opportunity to explore a Chinese takeout classic, which is a tomato beef chow mein. For those who are not familiar, tomato beef chow mein, as you might guess, prominently features the use of tomatoes, which happen to be in season right now here in California. If you don't happen to be so lucky though, you can also totally make use of some canned whole tomatoes too, which actually might be preferable than an out of season tomato since they'll have been picked and preserved at its peak ripeness. Our flavor palette is mostly going to be drawn from a number of classic pantry sauces that you'll likely recognize here. There will however be one very American addition, which is a little bit of ketchup for that classic form of sweetness that you'll know and love, cut with a little bit of sweet chili sauce for an interesting sweet and savory addition. Okay, so let's get into it. Okay, so starting things off as with many Wu Can Cook dishes, I'm crushing and mincing four cloves of garlic, followed by peeling and then fine mincing one inch or about one tablespoon's worth of ginger. Then next up are some green onions here, which I'm separating by their whites and greens, and then slicing up the whites for our wok fry, and then giving our greens a slice on a bias for our final finishing garnish. Then I'm gonna set these aside and dive right into my veggies here, starting off with these gorgeous looking vine ripe tomatoes. I'm going for fairly large wedges here. The juice of these tomatoes are gonna release into the wok fry and contribute some nice freshness to our saute. So keep in mind that these are gonna lose quite a bit of volume once that happens. Next up is a green bell pepper here. Now I acknowledge that this is a super iconic element to a tomato beef chow mein, but I actually think that this is almost 100% because of its color, which is going to look super pretty next to the red tomatoes. However, for those who are unfamiliar, a green bell pepper is essentially just an unripened red bell pepper, which makes them super bitter. And I actually think a red or orange bell pepper would probably taste better, but might not look quite as colorful or pretty. So here we are. Next up is half of a sweet white onion here, which I'm similarly large dicing, and we're moving on to our beef. So we're working with some skirt steak today, almost entirely because I couldn't find any flank steak at the market this week, and as you can see in my notebook, I was hoping to use flank steak. These two cuts of steak aren't necessarily interchangeable, but they do have similar lean quality, so I think we'll get away with it. You will notice, just like with flank steak, that I am being super careful to identify the direction of the grain so that I can chop against it. You will also notice that there is quite a bit of membrane on my skirt steak today too. This stuff is super chewy and borderline inedible, so we want to be sure to get as much of this off as possible. Now, if you're paying attention at the market, do your best to pick a cut with the least amount of this stuff as you can, since if you're paying by the pound, you'll literally be throwing away money here. Once these things are sliced up into thin strips, I'm tossing it into a bowl and getting our marinade going. This is four tablespoons of soy sauce plus one tablespoon of Shaoxing wine to start, followed by a tablespoon of brown sugar, half a teaspoon of white pepper, and a pinch of kosher salt. Then I'm rounding all of this out with half a teaspoon of cornstarch to protect our steak from overcooking in our wok fry, and we're moving on to our sauce. For our sauce today, I'm starting off with some familiar elements first. This is four tablespoons of soy sauce and one tablespoon of rice vinegar to start, followed by a tablespoon each of dark soy sauce and oyster sauce to bring some rich malted sweetness to our dish today. 
Then diving into the heavy hitters of our umami game, this is two tablespoons of doubanjang, which is going to carry all of our spiciness on its own. Then as promised, here is a tablespoon each of ketchup and sweet chili sauce for our sweet elements. Then finally, I'm rounding this all out with half a cup of stock plus a pinch of kosher salt to taste and we're ready for our noodles. Before we head over to the stove, however, the first thing that I'm going to do here is set up an ice bath in my largest mixing bowl. We're going to be working with some fresh Shanghainese round noodles today, which are so delicate that they can absolutely overcook off heat. So we are being super careful about this bit. Over on the stove, I've got my pot of water at a rolling boil, and then I'm dropping my noodles in for two minutes exactly, and yes, I mean literally set a timer. When we're working with ingredients that cook in two minutes, we need to be very precise or else they will absolutely overcook. I can't stress this enough. Once our two minutes are up, I'm immediately straining our noodles and then tossing them in our ice bath to halt the cooking process as well. Then once we have these cooled off, I'm tossing our noodles in a quick marinade of two tablespoons each of dark soy sauce and sesame oil for some extra depth of flavor that will come into play momentarily. Over on the stove, I've switched out my pot with my wok here, which has heated as hot as possible, and then I'm adding four tablespoons of peanut oil, and as always, long yao for your non-stick surface. Our tomato beef chow mein has a number of ingredients to cook today, so we are going to be employing quite a bit of batch cooking here to avoid any low heat issues. Going in here first is my skirt steak, which I'm laying down a piece at a time undisturbed for two minutes for a nice deep sear before tossing. Then I'm pulling these out and repeating with the remaining steak, mine took two batches altogether, cleaning out my wok and we're moving on to our veggies. For my second batch cook here, I'm reheating my wok and getting it ripping hot again. And then I'm adding four more tablespoons of peanut oil, giving it one more long yao and adding my aromatic garlic, ginger, and the whites of my green onions. I'm giving this a toss until fragrant for about 10 seconds and then adding my bell peppers to the wok for a one minute head start. Then next up are my tomatoes and onions, which I'm tossing for another two to three minutes before removing and repeating for one more third and final batch cook. Finally, for our third batch cook, we're getting to our noodles here, which will have developed a nice caramel color thanks to the dark soy sauce marinade. I'm tossing this in our wok for a full four minutes, agitating occasionally until they have picked up some nice deep searing and color. Once they have started to crisp up, I'm adding my veggies and beef back to the wok, followed by my sauce mixture about a quarter cup at a time. As always, I'm adding this in batches and stopping to taste to make sure that we don't over season here. Finally, I'm removing all of this from heat, garnishing with the greens of my green onions and we're ready to eat. Okay, so I have to admit, when I was a kid, this was not a dish that I particularly enjoyed, although I do remember my mom ordering it quite a bit. Something about the use of whole tomatoes in a noodle dish that when I was a kid was just really triggering for me, I don't know. That said though, now that I'm all grown up, I can tell you that the tomatoes don't really taste like whole chunks of fresh tomato like you would expect when you throw two whole raw tomatoes into a dish. Most of the rawness actually gets cooked out in the wok fry and leaves behind a wonderfully floral, sweet, savory, umami filled noodle dish that really scratches that itch for Chinese takeout the next time that you have one. The skirt steak has a nice bite to it without being too chewy. The veggies are a nice crispy contrast from their short wok fry. And of course, my favorite part, our noodles have an interesting crispy quality to them from being flash fried in the wok. If you're a fan of Chinese takeout and you're tired of the super basic chow mein and veggie lo mein that literally is in every Chinese takeout scene on TV ever, this is a great one to try out. Okay, so that's it everyone. I hope you enjoyed this and I hope you give this one a shot. We've been steadily adding to our series on Chinese takeout foods from TV and film, so definitely check out some of the other things from that series because we've done a lot of them. I'll also be cooking through this one live this coming Monday at 6.30 PST right here on YouTube, so tune in then and cook along with me too if you want. Lastly, if you do try this one out, definitely find your way to the home base wucancook.com where you can find all of the written recipes, the schedule of streams and releases, new Wu cooks, beats, tunes, and more. As always, like, comment, share, press some buttons, do the internet and things and I'll see you soon. Bye.